Hey, what's up? Jeff Blake here. This video series is sort of a continuation of the video series I did on building CSS-based layouts. So I thought I would take things a little bit further here for you because, you know, I am getting all kinds of response on YouTube. The videos on YouTube and on 10tonbooks.com. People are loving these videos. I love that you guys are loving these because I have so much fun putting them together. And, you know, you keep sending me the love. I'm just going to turn around and give you more videos, more articles, as much as I can. So keep your eyeballs on 10tonbooks.com because I'm just going to keep throwing it at you here. And of course, 10 ton books, always free, all the time. That's the deal, okay? All right, so we want to go a little bit further with some CSS-based layouts here. So I thought what I would do is give you a couple of additional examples of something that I showed in one of the previous videos, and then we'll go a little bit further with all this layout stuff. So I'm going to give you a quick refresher on building nested layouts inside a CSS-based layout. So before our eyes here, we see pretty much what we had in the previous video series. I have my header div up at the top there, my green monster there that's my main content area and then of course my yellow footer div down at the bottom and of course everything is nice and centered using the technique that I showed you in the previous video in terms of getting a CSS based layout centered so there it is that's where we stand right now so the first thing I'm gonna do is head back to Dreamweaver and we'll get started on nesting some additional CSS rules so what I have in mind here is to drop a menu over on the side but I want to throw a little bit more in here than I showed you in the last video I actually want to throw in a couple of extra boxes here so as always you'd have a layout already figured out either on paper or once again in Photoshop or Illustrator or something and you just follow along with what you've already created or more importantly for the freelancers among you what your client has already signed off on right so what I'm gonna do here is I'm clicked inside my green monster here and I'm gonna head into the code view up at the top there so I'm gonna click on my code button there's my cursor sitting inside the content div. If you saw the other videos, I'm sure you remember this. As before, I'm going to give myself a little bit of elbow room to work inside here, and I'm going to head up to my insert menu, down to layout objects, and I'm looking for div tag. There it is. So, new CSS style. Inside this dialog box, make sure you're set to advanced. So an advanced selector style is the type of style that allows us to control a div tag. I'm more reinforcing here with you. I hope this is working for you. So inside this selector area here, I'm going to type in the name for my selector. Number sign menu. Down at the bottom, this document only. So if you recall, this is going to be created inside an internal style sheet. I'll click on OK. I get my CSS rule definition dialog box for my new rule. I'm looking for my positioning category. There he is there. My positioning type is going to be absolute. Now I refer back to my layout that I've already figured out, right? I already have all my numbers, so I'm just plugging them in here. So I decide that I want to create a menu that's 150 pixels in width by 285 pixels in height. I'll set my top to zero. And same thing for my left, zero as well. I'm going to go to the background category and look for the cheesiest, nastiest color that I can find. That one's pretty nasty. I'm going to click on OK. OK one more time. Now, a refresher here for you. This is what I get inside my code view. Div ID equals menu, then some dummy content. Content for ID menu goes here and then the div closes. And because I was clicked inside my content div, this new div gets dropped inside the content div. That's how it works. This is what we call a nested div, by the way. Or in other words, a div inside a div. Now, a couple of things. More is a refresher here for you. Remember the ID equals this little fella right here, menu. That's the connection back up at the top of my screen. I can see my actual CSS rule, number sign menu, with all of his properties right there. So this little doodad right here is the connection that associates the rule to the div. I hope that works for you. All right, something else I got to explain in a little bit more detail. I'm going to go to my design view. There's my pucy, barfy menu color right there. So it worked, good enough. Now remember the top and left values that I set. As a matter of fact, if I click right on the edge of my menu, just to make sure that he's selected there, 
down on the property inspector, left zero and top zero. Now what I want to explain here is my menu is sitting inside my green monster, right? The green content box. So the left and top values are in relation to the top left corner of the green monster, okay? That's how that works. Because this guy, my selected menu, is inside the green monster. I hope that makes sense. If we didn't have the centering code in here, in fact, you may want to refer all the way back to part one of my video series on CSS layouts before all the centering took place. The left and top values in that situation were based off of the top left corner of the page. I hope that makes sense. In this situation, it's the top left corner of what we call the parent div, okay? So in other words, if my green monster moves, the menu is gonna move with them. I hope that works. I wish my kids would listen to me like this div would. So the next thing I want to do is drop some additional boxes underneath my menu here. So I'm going to do all of this in code view. I find it easiest when you're working with nested divs to do it all in code view. I know that many out there don't like code. They don't like handling code and so on. You know, I'm a visual artist. I'm a designer and I have crumbled. I find it so much easier to work inside code view. So if you're a little intimidated by code, work with it a little bit. You find it's really, really straightforward. You know, the reason why I like working in code view is I can see exactly where everything is. There's where the content div begins, there's where it ends, and here's what it contains. You know that sort of thing? There's my footer div from the previous video series. Anyway, I'm gonna get on with inserting my additional boxes underneath my menu. So I'm gonna click after my menu div, and once again, give myself a little bit of elbow room in here. And same story as before. I'm gonna go back to the insert menu, down to layout objects, over to div tag, new CSS style, okay, advanced selector type. I'm gonna call this guy menu box one, go ahead and click on okay. All right, now, sadly, this is where some of the math starts to come in. Again, math doesn't seem to be a strong suit for many people here, but you know, it's pretty simple stuff. You do have to work it out on paper a little bit. That's how I do it anyway. I am absolutely not a math guy at all. Uh, I struggle with it, but if I can figure out my basic widths and heights and so on, then all I need to do is come here and simply plug in my values. So let me give you a sense of what I'm talking about. I'm gonna flip back to Firefox just for a second. Now I haven't refreshed yet, so I don't see my menu over here. But let's imagine that I do have my menu here. Now if you recall, the menu is 150 pixels wide by 285 pixels in height. And the original green monster, I don't expect you to remember this, but it's 450 pixels in height. So what I want down in this area is two additional boxes that are equally spaced apart, five pixels below the menu. So you know what you do? You may have noticed as I've been flipping between my different programs that I have my calculator running. Here he is right here. Let me help you out here. I'm gonna take this 450. This is exactly how you work it out. 450 less the 285 leaves me with 165 pixels to work with. That's 165 pixels underneath my menu, which we can't see here. Now I said I wanted a gap of five pixels underneath the menu, and then I want a box, and then I want a gap of another five pixels, and then a second box. So I'm gonna take 165 less five less another five, obviously that's 155, right? Now, some of you might be good enough to do this in your head. 155 divided by two, because I want two boxes, 77 and a half. Now, I can't have half a pixel, so I'm gonna go with 77 pixels and we'll find out what we get here. So in other words, I jot these values down on a piece of paper, and then when I'm over here in Dreamweaver, these are the values that I would be typing in here. So, my positioning type to get things started is absolute. I said my width was gonna be 150 or at least I think I said that. And then my height, this is where I go 77, right? Now, again, you gotta think some math here. The top placement value. So I have a menu above this box, which